Yeah, no. All right, everyone, welcome to RelaxCast. This is our fourth RelaxCast that we've recorded so far. Um, and we have Miss Tracy with us um, to talk about mindfulness. Um, so what is mindfulness? So mindfulness is a state of being like aware of your surroundings. Um, it's about being like present in the moment and really thinking about like what you're doing as you're doing it. Okay. So how would someone practice mindfulness or meditation? There's a couple different ways that people can do it. Um, sometimes people think about really like guided meditation where they're like, you know, listening to maybe a YouTube video with like a comedy. We just music. did that in our yeah. choir class like, oh, yeah. five minutes ago. That's yeah. Awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's right. yeah so that's why I do that every day. Um, so, and I'll talk about that later. But um, definitely people can also just like take a few minutes to like really think about like what they're doing as they're doing it. Um, it's really just about like being present in the moment and thinking like, okay, this is what I'm doing right now. Like right now I'm doing a podcast with Dylan and Jess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like um, in like our daily lives we're so caught up in what we have to do next that yeah. we're never in the moment. Exactly. I should be in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what are the benefits of mindfulness? There's a lot of different benefits, but definitely like um, it can um, obviously make people less stressed. Um, mm -hmm. That would be nice. <laughs> yes, but it can also like um, improve concentration. It can really like, um, you know, just give people mental clarity, you know, so just really thinking about like, you know, all those benefits that we get from stress management. Yeah. So how often would someone have to practice mindfulness for it to de-stress uh, someone? I mean, ideally, people would practice it every day. Mm -hmm. So really, like, to make it, um, practice makes perfect, even when it comes to mindfulness mm -hmm. and meditation. So sometimes when people start doing it, they might, like, feel uncomfortable with it, especially some of the guided meditation stuff or some of the deep breathing or progressive relaxation. But once people start to practice it more, they get better at it. Mm -hmm. So, but if, you know, somebody can't practice it every day, it's still helpful just to do it whenever they can. So if they need, you know, just five minutes, you know, a um, couple times a week is fine, you know, but obviously if they can dedicate more time to it, they'll be a lot better at it. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, are there mindfulness related apps, like um, things that are more accessible um, to help you in doing so? There is one called Calm that's pretty good um, that can help you. It has like different uh, relaxations on there that people can do. Um, there's also a, cu a couple that are around anxiety. There's one yeah. that's like uh, Mind Shift and another one that's Headspace. Oh, I do know about Headspace. Yeah, yeah. that's what, and both of them, you know, will really like take what they have and, you know, you put in like how you're feeling that day and just taking like a little um, assessment of like what your anxiety level is and, and they can give you suggestions, you know, what you can do for that day to try and uh, decrease your stress levels and anxiety. This feels like a very like personal thing, like mm -hmm. like really like to like look into yourself. I feel like a lot yes. of the times like we're like, let's think about other things, I don't yeah. want to think about me, I don't want to think about me, but I feel like this maybe is a way to get yourself to start thinking about you. Yes, definitely. I might have to try some of those apps. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe today um, before we're yeah, exactly. There we go. Perfect. I know. The Calm one is pretty good, too. Yeah, that one okay. has a lot of different, like, a, music and stuff right. on there that you oh, can do. So. Music is so good to rely on. Yes. Definitely. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, how would you personally practice mindfulness? Um, I do guided meditations every day. So, um, so every day I take like, there's some that are different lengths. There's some that are 10 minutes, some 20 minutes. I mean, you can find guided meditations that are for an hour if you have that time. Um, I personally really like the honest guys on YouTube. I highly recommend looking into them. They're, um, it's, you know, just, a they have all different ones and it's like a guided meditation for blissful relaxation, guided meditation to help you fall asleep. Like, uh, you know, <laughs> and they have all different lengths too. So you can look and, you know, if you only have like 10 minutes, you can just listen to that 10 minute one. So, um, if so you have 20 cool. minutes, listen to the 20 minute one. So they, and there's so many of them. There's ones also to help with, um, and I think it was one of the questions about like the, um, like mental disorders too they have some that are specific to those awesome. so that's really nice yeah. yeah um how do you think schools or workplaces would use mindfulness um as a way to aid um employees faculty mm -hmm. students um so basically you know by 
by doing something with mindfulness like every day, it could definitely help to decrease people's anxiety levels. And just taking like a minute, you know, at the beginning of the day, like it would be great if we had like a mindful minute during the announcements every day, that you know. Be so advisory. Yes, exactly. Or like everybody just takes a deep breath, you know, and then really like the benefits of it are so good. And a lot of schools, workplaces, and things are doing it too. Obviously, like, you know, um, doing like yoga after school is really good or meditation like if anybody you know yeah it would be great to have like people do yoga you know it's a kiss's podcast yeah yeah that's excellent yeah all right so i know you talked about this before mm -hmm. but how would uh mindfulness practices be effective in treating mental illnesses so especially when it comes to some of the anxiety disorders, it can really like decrease people's anxiety. So like OCD, phobias, you know, generalized anxiety, um, any of those things, like, you know, if somebody's having panic attacks, hey, by doing that, it can really help with some of those. Um, it can also improve mood if people have um, depression too. So some of those like mood disorders as well. But like I said, the honest guys have ones that are specific to some of the, the uh, anxiety disorders too so um so things like you know uh blissful relaxation for ocd oh, oh wow. yeah it's actually pretty good yeah. like just to listen to you know definitely personal. i listen to all of them yeah, yeah so yep yeah. so you find them on youtube on honest YouTube, guys. yeah, the honest guys on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, they have really fun I British understand. accents. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, there you go. Some of the ones people Sounds people relaxing already. Like, yeah. <laughs> For some reason, the British accents are even less. Yeah, yeah, like, like you automatically yeah. relax. <laughs> relax. Um, so when I was doing some research uh, before the podcast, I was looking on this website that said there was things such as yeah, mindful walking, mm -hmm. mindful eating. I was curious as to what that meant. So it just means about like taking like, um, you know, um, really a time to think about what you're doing. So when it comes to the mindful walking, a lot of it is really about like, um, you know, going out in nature and kind of doing like that uh, guided relaxation, but outside while you're walking and like thinking about, you know, the fact that you're in the moment while you're taking a walk. Because just sometimes if let's say people wanted to do um, guided meditation, but they don't feel like sitting or lying down, they could do it too. So they could, you know, even um, have like a podcast on the podcast app on their Our phone. Our podcast? Yes, oh, they could. No. That's what we got right but they can, do, you know, or like download some of those things, listen to those things on YouTube as they're like outside walking in nature. And then mindful eating is actually like just about thinking about like what they're eating. So for example, like, you know, thinking about, okay, I'm going to take this meal and I'm not, you know, and eat it right now. And I'm not going to have my phone on and like, you know, eating, or I'm not going to have the TV on, you know, while I'm eating and things like that. And then thinking about like, okay, I'm going to take time to chew and savor my food. And stuff like that. Wow, that's really insightful. Yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's kind really of like, interesting stuff. I want to like, mm -hmm. I want to have like a meal in front of me right now. Yeah. Just be like, I'm now gonna eat this potato. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then I'm gonna think about like, am I full? And you know, do I really need seconds? And stuff like yeah. that. So that's Maybe my you eating. should think about that. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 do I really need seconds? Second. Too good. I know, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, are there specific places you could? Uh, practice mindfulness with other people? I'm not sure about like any specific like just mindfulness stuff. I mean obviously there's yoga studios and stuff and they do a lot of relaxation there. I can't specifically think of anything like a place where you could just go to meditate with other people though. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we should out. make one. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, there, were, there was some talk about a mindfulness room and Miss oh. Bujanowski was gonna get it started. Mm. She probably should. Um, so, yeah, that's what, yeah, yeah you guys should definitely talk to awesome. her, too. Because <laughs> she was going to get, like, some things for it. I don't know if it got up and running yet, but it was, you know, it would be great to have a place where students could like really, like, take a break. Like, in the choir room, there's, like, this closet that no one uses, and that should totally have bean bags. And, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Balls. Yes, I know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, so obviously this podcast is meant for high school students. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you think mindfulness would personally affect 
high school students based on like what they do throughout the day and so I think it could really really reduce anxiety like um, anxiety around like you know class um, anxiety around like social situations and then, like tests like, maybe yeah absolutely yeah definitely I mean it, they should really try to implement something with mindfulness like right before everybody takes the PSAT or so, the so you know? this isn't a question that I wrote but mm -hmm. um, so I struggle a lot with test anxiety mm -hmm. um, where I know the material and mm -hmm. I study very hard and then I go take the test and I I freeze and don't do as well. So what kind of like mindfulness techniques would I use before I would take a test? So before you went into like the testing situation, you would, you know, just take like a minute to like close your eyes, take some deep breaths, you know, kind of think about like what exactly you're anxious about about that test and then like picture yourself like doing well on the test you know and kind of just that like again like deep breathing so thinking about like you know the breaths and stuff and um you know the moment that you're in I mean, rather than thinking about all your test anxiety so actually one of the um the the videos on youtube that i really like talks about like putting all of your thoughts, the anxious thoughts, into a balloon and then watching them float off to the sky yeah. and then they're gone. You don't have any more anxious wow. thoughts. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so stuff like that is really would be really good for, like, test anxiety. Yeah, I had a teacher tell me about a, a worry box. Oh. Or, mm -hmm. I forget, maybe it was Mr. Mills. But Mr. Goddard. Mm -hmm. Mr. Goddard. Mm -hmm. right? And you basically just take everything you're worried about and put it in a box. Mm -hmm. And then when, you, when you're supposed to worry about that thing, that's when you worry about it, not yes. when you're, like, in the middle of a test or when you're yes. doing something you love. Like, oh, yeah, that's put it away yeah. tell it later and when you're yeah. ready take it out yeah <laughs> i got the worry yeah deal with it and yeah. then move on and that's how, that's great that's a really good idea i hadn't heard of that before yeah. also yeah, uh, that's it. for tests specifically there's like a lot of social stigma around tests Definitely. i feel like people totally uh blow tests out of proportion mm -hmm. they're always worried about it even though it doesn't really mean that much in the mm -hmm. long run yeah. you should just do your best it's mm -hmm. honestly not that big a deal. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, you just study for it and just mm -hmm. just go for it. And yeah. definitely just like think that you're gonna do well. I think like yeah. And this doesn't mm -hmm. just go for tests, but for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of students, like high school students, go into things thinking I'm gonna do this wrong or I'm gonna mm -hmm. do bad. Mm -hmm. um, especially I'm like I know I'm guilty of it when I'm about to go on stage for a number mm -hmm. and I'm like oh, I'm not yeah. gonna do well in this number and then I don't. Yeah, that's and, right. Yeah. Maybe it's because I'm not being mindful of the fact that I could do well. Yeah, that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they say it in sports all the time, right? Yeah. They have like that, you know, um, that imagery, right? So guided imagery around like doing well, like picturing mm -hmm. yourself getting a touchdown or a ba um, basket or, you know, whatever the sport you're playing is. And so the same thing for like, you know, any type of performance is really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, I was gonna say journaling too is a big thing oh, too. Yeah, so we like do journaling, journal. you know, just and even just writing down all the anxiety that you have. Like I uh, could even, you know, let's say you're gonna go take a test, you write down all the anxiety, and then just like metaphorically, like, you could like rip it up and throw it away. You know? <laughs> so, uh, all of your negative thoughts like are gone. So yeah, I like that. Yeah. Cool. This, this is my favorite question. This is always our ending question. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is just a fun question. So if there was a famous person or any faculty member that you could practice mindfulness with, who would it be? Oh, that's a good question. Hmm. I mean, I'm going to have to say, like, uh, I can't specifically think of a famous person, but um, if it was maybe, like, somebody who was already, like, um, like a like a monk, you know what oh, I mean? Like, or like somebody who was okay, like really into like, you know, yoga and had already like really achieved a high level of mindfulness, well, you know, you would be something, like something that's like, yeah, exactly. And like you'd both be into it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think, um, yeah, I can't necessarily think of, you know, a like specific person, but I definitely think that somebody who could, you know, really teach me about like more things that they do to be mindful. And those are people who, I mean, they get really deep into yeah. meditation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so stuff so like that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I think that would be amazing just to know like how they do it. So. If a faculty member, I'm probably thinking you choose Miss Clark. Oh, probably. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I would definitely choose Miss Clark, yes, to practice like mindfulness with. I know, exactly. Oh, yeah. And, yep, and uh, yeah, we do all kinds of stuff with mindfulness. So. Oh, good. <laughs> um, so here at BMHS, there is a class called Stress Management. 
It's a quarter class that you can take. And what kind of things do you do in the stress management class? I haven't actually taught it yet. I'm teaching it at the end of the year. I have like a quarter four class. Um, but you do, a, do a, all the things that we've been talking about with like the guided meditation and all those, like imagery. You do different projects, like looking up ways to reduce stress. But you also um, do like different activities like origami and like the coloring and like all those things. So basically there's like a lot of like trying different things. And it's also focused on some time management too. So like looking at like That's your schedule and you know how to keep yourself organized so that you can decrease your stress levels too. So oh. what block would that be? Um, that's know? a good question. I don't even know when I have it. I know yeah. I have it quarter four. I haven't even looked because it's so <laughs> far away. Um, but I know. And then um, Ms. Clark has a couple of classes too. Okay. So, so but I only have one section. Everyone right. should definitely look into it. Do you have yeah, a free study definitely. period? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so that's all the questions that we had. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, this was excellent. You know, we really look forward to making these podcasts because – Dylan and us, especially as seniors, we mm -hmm. lead like such like a busy life, and you wouldn't think we do like this is like teenagers, but like teenagers are really, mm -hmm. really busy, and mm -hmm. you know we just want to try and give other teenagers who are busy like us the chance to find things that help them be stressed mm -hmm. and yeah. you know find their space, find their bubble. Um, so I think this can definitely help. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you it's so, so great. You guys are doing this relaxed cast. I love it. I love yeah. to listen to the other ones yeah, too, that you did with the to other teachers. Everyone else. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.